I'd like to dedicate today's video to my good friend and colleague NJ1Q. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Today's video is something that I've wanted to do for a long time. A um, friend of mine, Joe, NJ1Q, and I were talking about doing this, I don't know, a year or so ago. And uh, this morning I just got up and it, it, this thought came into my head and I said, i got to try it today, i got to try it. Um, you folks all know how much of a problem I have with uh, this local 610 kilohertz, which I said before is right in back of the camera. And it's uh, 60 over, 70 over, something like that. It's just incredible signal. Um, and that kind of led me to the development of my high-pass filters for uh, the, to uh, eliminate the AM broadcast band in an SDR uh, and show just, you know, uh, 160 and up. And also the low-pass filter um, to roll off the broadcast band so that uh, all the stuff below that, the NDBs, uh, you know, from four, let's say roughly 450, 500 kilohertz down were, uh, were not overloaded. And um, so I thought to myself, well, how much, how much real power is there? And, wh and, <laughs> and what is, is it usable? And um, Joe had the same issue uh, out at his place. He's pretty close to uh, some broadcast station. So I, I, this morning I decided, well, let me just hook up a diode and, uh, uh, and take a look at uh, how much power I can actually, uh, actually see there. So I'm going to grab this go, the camera now, go handheld, show you what I'm using. Um, just quick, uh, it's the uh, 275 or 300 foot dipole, open wire feed down to a 4 to 1 ballon and then a short piece of coax into the house. And this signal is on 610 kilohertz. The ballon is spec for just below 160. So I'm sure it's not a very efficient coupler uh, between that antenna and, and the, uh, the coax cable. So um, bear in mind that there's probably significantly more power uh, available. Um, <laughs> not that it's a lot, but this is just going to be kind of a fun video. So I'll show you how I use diodes and a voltage doubler and LEDs and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I'm going to go handheld now. No, first I'm going to take a sip of coffee. Um, and uh, then we'll, I'll show you how my, the shack is set up as far as the antenna goes and whatnot. And, and where it comes, how it comes through and all. And then uh, we'll, go, we'll go from there. All right? This one's for you, Joe. Com comfortable over there, Sophie? So, are you comfortable? Can I get you anything? Want to eat? Go back to sleep. Uh, <clears throat> All right, guys. So here's the deal. Here's the. Uh, well, I'll just show you this. There's my old my Transoceanic, which was my everyday. Um, kind of AM listening radio just to uh, listen to the broadcast band. I like listening to uh, the broadcast band during the day. And unfortunately, it just uh, crapped out. And I'm afraid that it's that uh, unobtainium, whatever it is, the uh, mixer tube, the 1L whatever, or 1L6 or 1R. I can't remember what it is, but there's some. So I haven't even looked at it yet, but um, that was a dead one and uh, it got it running. Anyway, so here's what we're going to be using so you can hear the background audio of the 610. We'll just turn this on. It's a... Turn that down. It's a um, FRG 7700. And as you can see, it's uh, like 60 over. And that's just using... Remember that experimental uh, ferret loop that we were putzing around with there for a while? That's all it's using is that. So 60 over with that. You can imagine how much energy is there with the uh, the big dipole. And we'll just take a quick poke around here. Here's a couple more loops. Oh, this is one I wanted to show you guys. 
at some point. Uh, boy, let me switch to my other hand here. This is really hard. But uh, this is a one I made out of uh, out of cherry, and it, the loop rotates, and so you can get tilt and azimuth all out of the same thing. And being a uh, PL259 in the back here, and two uh, fairly identical pieces of cherry. So anyway, so much for that. Oops, sorry about that. All right, let's swing over to the uh, to the ham shack. So right now. Um, Outside the window, out in the world there, there's um, the dipole is at the top of the tower. It's the center of it's like 129 feet up and the ends around 80 and it is about three, I, I, I keep forgetting now, but it's way bigger than 160. So let's just call it 300 feet. Comes down with open wire feed to a four to one ballon because most of the bands that I use this on um, is, um, is, is uh, 160 80 and it's it's never going to be uh, a good match so decided to do a four to one anyway but that ballon uh, is not spec down to 600 kilohertz um, so I use this tuner um, and then it comes to a switch switch so to here goes to the 7300 and this side goes up to my patch panel and we'll we'll talk a lot more about this patch panel and all the different radios and stuff that's hooked to it. But for right now, um, this is uh, where the antenna comes up in, in the HF antenna. Down to a piece of coax here with BNC on it. And then a little, um, I don't know what you mean, little, little dead bug style maybe? I don't know. Um, little BNC adapter, two diodes, and two capacitors making a voltage doubler. And um, we'll take a look at that up close and, and see how that's constructed. Actually, let me grab this. I don't know if you guys can see this or not good enough, but let me zoom in on it. So the AC voltmeter, the AC voltage here is the antenna system. So the 610 kilohertz comes in, <clears throat> excuse me, the 610 kilohertz comes in and it feeds these two diodes here. And these two diodes are feed each one of these capacitors and the capacitors are in series so you get double the voltage out of it. Um, originally on this diagram it said uh, 1N4001 but one N4001 or 4006 or 7 or any of that series of diodes does not have a fast enough recovery time. Um, the recovery time is something like 30 milliseconds or excuse me 30 microseconds and that ends up meaning the maximum frequency you could use that diode at is like I don't know 33 kilohertz or something. We're, we're doing uh, we're, we're looking at 610 kilohertz. So the diode that you really want to use yeah, one of those old germaniums would work too, but the 1N4148 has a recovery time or switching time of approximately uh, 8 nanoseconds. So well, well above what we really, really need. <clears throat> Here's the uh, meter we're going to use to measure voltage. I just thought I'd break out one of these old uh, student meters that I had. Um, this assembly um, will 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 generate the voltage from the antenna through the capacitors and then clip lead it over here if if my video doesn't have at least a couple of clip leads in it it's not really a a w1 vlf video and this old meter okay and then a bunch of banana plug adapters to show to put the leds in let me give you a close up of that put my hand behind it I have three different LEDs. One of them is red, one of them is orange, and one of them is white. And we're going to see, first off, what kind of voltage we can generate here. Um, we'll be on the 2 and 10 volt scales, the red and green respectively, 2 volts and 10 volts. And we'll just see what kind of voltage, open circuit voltage we can get, what kind of uh, voltage we can, we can get when we put a diode on it. And then Here's the fun, the really fun part, something I've always wanted to do. Of course, there's crap all over the place here. I've got a little Channel Master radio here. I'm going to see if we can power this 
power this radio that normally runs on 9 volt, 9 volt battery. Okay, here's the little, uh, oops, there's the little connect connector there. 9 volt battery. We're going to see if we can power this by the voltage generated from our big antenna and tune different stations on this radio. So, um, that's actually something I'm really kind of excited to do. So, anyway, let's, uh, let's set the camera up for that and see what happens. Um, I'll be back. All right, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, because this is all kind of a stream of consciousness. Uh, but there's the antenna. But this is the radio, where is it, that we're going to listen to. So I'm getting married this summer, and once I move into my future... So you'll be able to correlate that audio with any voltage that's being developed across the LEDs. So now I'm going to set up for that. Okay, we're set up on the bench. Fortunately, this is not my really desired way to do this. We'll zoom in a little bit. You'll be able to see the, uh, the meter movement. Um, but I'm going to go, go out now. Uh, so what you'll have is the diode and um, capacitor voltage doubler, the coax cable, the coax input rather, and here's the coax cable. Now right now I am let me get that. Right now I'm taking the output across the two capacitors. Okay, across those those two capacitors and that's double the voltage. But if I take the voltage from this one diode across excuse me, let me uh, let me figure this out. How was I going to do that again? Oh, if I take the voltage from here, we're going to only have one diode in the picture. So it's basically going to be a half-wave rectifier. So I'll take a look at that. That's we're going to we're going to grab the voltage from the from the top of this diode to the bottom of this capacitor. And if you look at it, all it really is is just a half-wave rectifier. Now let's just take a look and see what kind of results we can get with that. Too bad that that's blown out so bad like that. Well, it's not a heck of a lot I can do about that. So we're going to hook up, and I'll zoom in and let you guys see the uh, the picture. So here we go. We're going to grab. A, we're going to grab. Right now, I have the coax cable is going to be connected. Uh, let's see. And the antenna is going to be connected. And I see absolutely no voltage whatsoever. So, oh, no. Cross that diode to here. All right, I got to figure out what went wrong. Oh, this is this is what went wrong. I don't have the antenna tuner in the open position, so we're trying to tune it. So here we go. Again, <laughs> still not working. Stand by. I'll be right back. All right. Here's why it wasn't working. Because I only had I had none of the buttons pushed in on the meter. So let's see. Am I in the right spot here? Uh, from one across one capacitor. All right. Now move to the uh, across both. Okay. So here's what we have available to us. Uh, let's zoom in. I'll get rid of some of that if I could. That's terrible. Ah, that's better. Okay. We'll uh, move a little bit off to the side here. Here's where we're going to put the LED. Here's the first, uh, the first LED. I'm not sure which one, which one of these uh, is white and which one's red. Pretty sure, pretty sure this is the red one. So let's plug that in and see if we can get it to. Uh, excuse me. See if we can get it to light. And if you look really closely, it is barely lit. Okay, let's turn the radio on. But I want to tell you about the tool that has changed my life when it comes to budgeting. 
Over six million people are okay. already on Not too account, impressive, is it? And using it every day to take control of their money. It's amazing. Okay, so let's go across the voltage doubler and see what we can get. So I have to go across both capacitors now. Instead of going, instead of going here, I'm going to here. Now the LED is on quite brightly. In fact, it's on so strong that you won't really hear the diff you won't see that much difference when I turn the radio up listening to the audio. I'll help you take control of your money. Remember, a budget doesn't limit your freedom. A budget gives you freedom. So let's let's pop out the uh, the red LED. Back up a little. Pop out the red LED. Here's one of the orange LEDs. Doesn't light very well, but let's go with the white here. Here's the cool one. Uh, let's see, it's this one. Gives you all of that. It's our brand new all access membership to help you get out of debt, save for emergencies, and give with outrageous generosity. Here's how it works. You'll learn the Let me move the camera so you can get a better or no, maybe I can move the, the uh university. You'll budget with the every dollar app and finally take control of your money. Then you'll track your progress with the new baby. So let's see we have for unloaded voltage. Uh, unloaded voltage, we end up with uh, roughly half scale, so four and a half volts. Roughly four and a half volts. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. Four and a half volts, right? And when we put the LED on, it to give you an idea, there's not much current there, so it, it loads it, it loads it down pretty good just having that one LED in there. You could see it on my hand, the, the illumination on my hand. All right. So, big deal, right? <clears throat> now comes the fun part. Let's pull that LED out. Let me reset the camera here. Okay. Channel Master, I don't know, giveaway radio from way back when. Let's hook the wires up to it. Add a plus, a minus, and we're still at about five volts, but it's, I'm sure as soon as I put this radio on there, it's gonna, it's gonna drop dramatically. But let's see what happens. Yep, dropped down <laughs> two volts. But, let me see if I can tune it any better. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Not very loud, is it? You can hear the, the volume go up and down as that radio station modulates. Now I bet you a lot of people are going to say, oh well, sounds a lot like uh, just those capacitors in the, in the voltage doubler. So I'm going to switch the antenna off here. Okay, so there is no audio with the antenna off. In fact, can you see the voltage? Yeah, the voltage dropped to zero. Let's switch it back on. Oh, live television or semi-live. I guess these clip leads are <laughs> only so long. Wait a minute, stand by one more, one more thing. Okay. So
So I don't know, maybe if there was enough, uh, I don't know, you would call this a success. That's a 660 out of New York. So that's be this radio is being powered by the voltage doubler coming off my main antenna. And you can hear it kind of pulsing too. As the uh, modulation on the other station changes. So let me let me switch back to the LED bulb real quick. The LED white LED, I'll point, uh, I'll well, optimize it and uh, let you hear that. Stand by. Okay, I'm just going to let this run for a few seconds. Okay, so let me ask you this. Where would you, let's just have some fun, and I don't want you to get hung up on the specifics, but I want you to just think, if you could lead a team... That's a three and a half volt LED um, running at about uh, five milliamps. This is at the heart of this. So, not a lot of power. But again... What results do you want to produce in the world? And you're leading a team to make those results a reality. Again, uh, you know, that ballon is probably uh, blocking okay. well, or not okay. effectively okay. letting all the antenna here. current come through. I want you through. to wrestle with three questions, okay? And then I want you, if you want to, I want you to call back my show, the Ken Coleman Show, all right? And you can call between 12 and 2 Eastern Standard Time. And that Monday is coming Friday. from... I want you to answer these three questions that are in the Career Clarity Guide that's free that I want you to download at KenColeman.com. I want you to really focus on mission and you answer these questions. Who are the people I most want to help? What's the problem I most want to solve? And what are the solutions to those problems that I want to be a part of? See, leadership is service. Leadership is leading a, a team in, in a bigger organization to solve a problem that's way bigger than us as the I'm leader. going to shut the light and, off in uh, here because everything that, is uh, kind of blown out. Stand by. Answer those questions. And you'll begin to see, oh, I want to create these results in the marketplace. But once we determine the results we want to create in the marketplace, we find organizations that are doing that. And we say, do they align with our values? And then I want to get in. Because right. here's the key. And young people, hear me that you want. So, folks, I shut the radio off, but I did not disconnect the antenna. So you're still seeing the, uh, the voltage fluctuation from the modulation from the 610. Anyway, if, uh, if you enjoyed this video... Could you please subscribe? And uh, I'm up to 1,250 subscribers, which I never thought in my life there would be 1,250 people interested in what I'm doing. But um, it, that would help me out quite a bit. Um, what else? Thanks again for all your comments. And if you, if you, yeah, the other thing is, if you want to see any other kind of wacky videos like this, go back and look at my previous videos. On, uh, on, on loops. Uh, and I got another fun one coming up too in the next couple of days or so. So everybody, thanks an awful lot. I really appreciate it. 73s, this is W1VLF signing out from the ham radio bench. curious if you think um, with Kevin, if, if something that people tell him he's good at, or that he knows he's good.